what happens in the liturgy of the Eucharist. After we read from the scriptures, after we re-declare our faith in these articles of the creed, after we pray the universal prayers where we respond, Lord, hear our prayer, lift up our petitions to God, what do we do? We sit down and then there's this weird part of Mass that a lot of us kind of treat like halftime. It's time to get up and go to the bathroom, take a stretch before communion time, um, but it's actually one of the most important moments for us to be active spiritually in the liturgy. It's the offertory. It's when they pass the baskets, right? Uh, and some of us put money in the baskets, some of us give through online giving, but the point of that is we're giving to God a portion of our livelihood, right? Some of the money that I make to support my family goes into that basket to show God my life is in his hands. And so whether you're a kid and you don't have money, uh, or whether you don't have money with you at that mass, or you're, whether you're a parent and you use online giving and it's not physically going in the basket, as the basket is passing, it's a good spiritual practice to think about what are my prayers, my works, my joys, my sufferings that I want to place symbolically in this basket. Because all of that comes together, all the offerings of the people at mass come together, and then they are presented through that offertory procession symbolically in the gifts of bread and wine that come up to the altar and are transformed into God. That's the idea, is that those boring, ordinary, mundane, difficult, exciting aspects of your life get transformed into the heart of God through the Mass. And so offertory isn't just halftime. It's supposed to be this time where we're, we're presenting those things to God and saying thank you for those gifts and Lord help me with this struggle, bless this person in my life. That's what the offertory is all about. As those gifts are brought up to the altar, or once those gifts are brought up to the altar, uh, then comes the most important part of the liturgy of the Eucharist, the climax of the Mass, the Eucharistic prayer. It's the long prayer where we're kneeling down for most of it. Uh, it's pretty easy to get lost in it, uh, but it's got some main parts to it. Uh, the most important parts being the epiclesis, when the priest extends his hands over the bread and wine, you'll hear the altar servers and a lot of churches ring bells to remind us something mystical is going on right now. Right, The Holy Spirit is coming down on those gifts of bread and wine. And then the words of institution is what the church calls them. The words that Jesus actually said at the Last Supper, he's speaking through the priest, through Father Joe's voice, through Father Jack's voice, Father Chris's voice, Father whoever's voice, to say, this is my body. Right? When God says something, it is. Let there be light, boom, there's light. When Jesus takes bread in his hands and says, this is my body, it is. It can't not be. And so Jesus speaks through his priest and does the same thing he did at the Last Supper at that Mass. It's not bread anymore, even though it looks like bread, tastes like bread, smells like bread. It is Jesus, fully and entirely. And then the chalice, this is my blood, fully and entirely Jesus' chalice, all of him. That's an awesome thing, <laughs> right? And then we move on, through, you know, there's more prayers there. There's more prayers for the church, prayers for the people of God, prayers for civil leaders, prayers for all sorts of stuff in that liturgy of the word. And then there's that climactic moment where the priest elevates both the bread and the wine. It's the, this prayer called the doxology, right? Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Um, and then we give the great amen, and then we stand, and we recite the words that Jesus taught us. When Jesus' apostles asked him, how should we pray, he gave us specific words, the Our Father. Uh, and so we recite those together. And then we offer a sign of peace, again, because Jesus said, if you come to the altar to offer your sacrifice and you have something against your brother, set your gift down, go make peace with your brother, and then come back to the altar. So at that moment, we sort of pause what we're doing and turn to each other and say, peace, peace be with you. And that's a time in my heart, if someone I'm fighting with isn't present at Mass, <laughs> or they're sitting on the other side of the church and it's an awkward thing to go over and make peace with them, at least in my heart, I want to offer them peace. All right? And then we all come forward for communion time, uh, and we get to receive God in the form of bread, in the form of wine. He wants to come into us. That's the God that we believe in. He wants to be so close to us that he makes himself into this small little wafer-looking form so he can get inside of us. All right, and then we go back to our pew and we just rest in that, the awesomeness of that, that God is inside of us, that we are walking tabernacles, carrying God wherever we go, to school, to the gym, to work, to soccer practice, to that PTA meeting, wherever we go. We bring God with us. Some people will leave Mass at that point, but Mass isn't done. <laughs> so we want to make sure we stick around for the end of it, right? Because there's, we, we, uh, after, after praying, after communion, then we stand up and there's this concluding prayer that kind of wraps up the Mass. It sort of echoes some of the prayers from that beginning of Mass prayer, the Collect, um, and reiterates like what we just did and asks for the grace to go out and live it in the world. And then we receive a blessing from the priest. And there's grace that comes to us from that blessing. So you don't want to leave without receiving that. You don't want to leave the stuff behind, right? You don't want to leave the blessing behind. So stick around for that blessing. 
Uh, and then there's that concluding him. And we are told to go out into the world to love and serve the Lord. We're not meant to just do the thing that we do in church. We're meant to go out and bring it to other people. 